Hey, baby. You think you went on... How many of you are glad that's the last time you're going to see that? Uh, uh, welcome to all our campuses, Prosper, McKinney, Frisco West, all of you watching online, all of us here at Frisco East. Glad, so glad that you're here. And uh, that little video thing, uh, and can we just say a, a huge thank you to our media team? They put all these things together. They do this. Great job, guys. Video guys, creative but, the, but that bumper is meant to over-exaggerate, uh, or is that, that's not even the right English, over-exaggerate, to exaggerate our lives. What we display to people and what really is going on are two different things, sometimes, sometimes. And over the last few weeks in this series called Insta Family, we've been talking about not just our immediate family, but all of our families, the, the families that we have. And over the last few weeks, uh, we've talked about in week one, we talked about, I want a new family. Instead of trading in what you have, why don't you make what you have better? And that starts with you. So draw a circle around yourself and start growing and start getting healthy. Week two, we talked about the good life. And, and that was just filling in that circle with some good things. Uh, the third week, we talked about, won't you be my neighbor? And we just had eyes wide open, heart wide open for compassion and, and, and action. Uh, not just seeing somebody and go, oh, that's too, so bad, but actually doing something. Uh, last week, we talked about the next generation and talked about raising up not just good kids, although we want good kids, but raising up Jesus kids, people, kids who actually know and believe in, in who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Today, I want to talk about Imago Dei, and I'll explain that in just a minute, but I think it's important um, to talk about image. So let me ask you a question. How many are on social media of some kind? Raise your hand, really? Uh, raise your hand, don't lie. Social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. All right, so um, good. So I am too, I am too. At our campuses, hopefully, I think the majority of us are. How, how many have ever taken a selfie? You have to raise your hand on this one. Okay, don't lie either. Say, I don't do that. So, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you know, here I am, the cowboy game. Whoa, yeah. All right, so I have two, I have two. Um, so social media is a huge part of our lives. Now, I understand some of you are not. Some of you are like, man, I'm gonna get in that stuff, that's, that's crazy, I'm not. But that's fine, that's fine. This message, believe me, is not just for people who use social media. This is for everyone. This is for all of us who have family of some sort because we've been talking about family. We've been talking about immediate family. We've been talking about marriage. We've been talking about kids. We've been talking about church family. We've been talking about neighbors. We've been our neighborhood family. We're talking about our, our church or our, our school family or our work family. Today, I want to talk about just our social media family because this is, you know, you not consider it, right? You may not say, oh, that's my family, but you've allowed them into your life. You've allowed the friends that you have, you've said yes to their friend request, you have said yes to them following you, you have followed, you have uh, invited somebody to be a friend or requested somebody to be a friend. So I'm gonna call this our social media family. No, you may not know everyone, I sure, certainly don't, but there's a lot of them that I do. It's a, fa it's, it's a sort of family that we have, just like our neighborhood family, just like school family, this is a family. And how we navigate social media and, and or any way that we communicate. So whether that's communicating on the phone or by text or email or through the car window. Get it? Okay, okay, yeah. That's a form of communication just like social media. So whether you're on social media or not, it doesn't matter. It's our words. It's, it's, it's everything that we communicate, who we allow to speak into our lives. And it's critical. It's critical as we talk about social media. So in the HuffPost in February of 2017, Clarissa Silva wrote an article about the effects of social media on our lives. Here's a quote from Clarissa. Social media has been linked to high levels of loneliness, envy, anxiety, depression, narcissism, and decreased social skills. How many would agree with this? 
How many would agree and say, you know what? Uh, there, there's some things about this that I think are true. Now, it doesn't matter what you think. This is the research. Uh, between 12 and 73 years of age. Okay, so I don't know how many, I can't remember exactly how many, but between 12 and 73, this is what happened. Now, here are the statistics of the research. Here we go. 60% of people using social media reported that it, that it, it has impacted their self-esteem in a negative way. So what does that mean? Well, you look at somebody else in the way that they look, mind, don't mind the filter or filters or the surgeries or you know, whatever, right? And I don't mean that in a negative way. I, I certainly don't mean that in a negative way. I just say that we, we look at somebody else and we go, man, I wish I looked like that. We look at somebody's house and we go, oh man, man, it must be nice. What a man, what do they do? We looked at their car, we looked at their vacations, and I've talked about this before, right, in week one of Insta Family, but this is this is real. 60% says that it has affect their self-image, their self-esteem, the way they look about themselves. They look at somebody else and they go, they're prettier. They go to somebody else and they say they got more. They go to somebody else and they say, wow, they're awesome. They go awesome places, they do awesome things, they have awesome friends, and we look now, you may, not, you may not process it right in the moment, you just look at that as you're scrolling and you just go, oh, man. And it's the same whether you're on social media or not. You look at people and, and what they drive, you look at people and how they dress, you look at people and all this stuff, and you just go, wow, this is real. It affects 60%. It's in a negative way. You look at yourself and you go, I'm not enough. I'm not enough, I don't have enough. 50% reported social media have, uh, ha, uh, having negative effects on their relationships. So they have relationships with social media, but how many have ever gotten, don't raise your hand, how many have ever gotten a fight with somebody on social media? Oh yeah? Oh, oh well, well, right? 50% say that yes, it has affected my relationships in a negative way. 80%, really? 80% reported that it is easier to be deceived by others through their sharing of social media. So no, what they see uh, may not always be reality. And that's the video that before the message is that what you see is not always reality. And what you portray on social media is not always reality. Here and my husband, my love of my life. And two days, you know what I'm saying? Two days later, it's like, God, I can't stand you. I gotta get out of here for a second, right? Love of my life, forever, friend, whatever. And I'm not making fun of that either, so please don't, don't, don't go like, oh, he's talking to me. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying, it's the way that we get it, it's the way that we look at it, and we, we look at it and go, wow, they're awesome. They're just real, just like you. Nobody's marriage is perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. Nobody's kids are perfect. Nobody's parents are perfect. Nobody's vacation is perfect. None of what we see, it's just a picture. It's just like, hey, we're in Tahoe having fun. Ha. Ah. They don't tell you their bags didn't show up. You know, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. I mean, it's just like, oh, we're just we're gonna have it's just a picture. However, however, when we allow it. To get in, that's the thing. So that's what I want to talk about today. Whether you're on it or not, please hear me. And next generation, if you're in, in elementary, middle school, or high school, especially, I want, you to, I want you to really pay attention today. Because if you are not on social media, I guarantee you almost 99% that your kids are. You may not know it. You may have forbidden it. But there's ways around that. Sorry, kids. <laughs> but there's ways around and, and so if it doesn't affect you and you're like, John, I don't care about that. I don't, it doesn't affect me. I'm part of the 50% that it doesn't affect. I'm part of the 40%. I'm part of the 20 Okay, good. Good for you. But your kids or your grandkids, they're affected. And we need to understand how to navigate this family of ours. It's not going away. And, and I'm not saying that social media is evil. So please don't, please don't hear that. Please don't hear that I think, oh, we should just get off it because it's so damaging. Uh, you know, TV can be damaging. There's a lot of things that can be damaging. It's money. But money, how many know money's good? How many know a lot of money is good? But the love of it is evil. And when we allow these things, so, so here's where I'm going today. Just two thoughts. Two thoughts, gonna be quick today. But I think it matters that we cover this. Because this is a part of our family. Social media is, or 
what people think of us or comparison. All this is a part of us, whether you're on it or not. And your kids are probably on it. So you need to know how to navigate these challenges and how do we think about this? I think I need to remind you of a few things. Number one, God specifically chose to create us in his image. He, he specifically chose, let's read Genesis 1, 27, just real quick. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Now, what is, what's the significance of this? Well, earlier, he created kangaroos. He created wolves or whatever you like. I mean, he created all these little animals, of, you know, golden retrievers. Now, I'm not saying in the garden they were there, but maybe. But he never said one thing about the stars, the moon, the dogs, the cats. He never said one thing about they were created in his image. There's only one thing. There's only, there was only one part of creation that he says, this is my image. And it's you. And it's me. In Latin, it says this, imago dei, the image of God. The image of God. We were created in the image specifically chosen, specifically chosen to be cre created in his image. Now, I understand that when you look in the mirror and you see the loss of hair or you see the unibrow, or you see the lack of eyebrows, or you see hair falling out, or you see too much hair, or you see, you know, ears crazy, you see a nose that's huge, you see those things, that's normal, okay? So those things are normal, and you look at yourself and you go, man, I wish I could change that, I wish I could, that's not really the, the point of this, is that, and so this is not about you can't improve yourself, you never can do this or that, that's not about, it's not about that. However, it's, it's understanding that you have value. And when social media says that unless you look like this or have this or own this or drive this or live in this, you don't have as much value as I do. Does that make sense? This affects us. That's why we gotta be aware and, and, and understand that there are people who have more money than you. There are people who are better looking than you. There are people who are more dysfunctional than you. You have people that are weirder than you. And you look at social media and you go, man, they're weird, right? You do, we do, we go, man, I'm glad I'm not them. You look at other people and you go, man, I wish I were them. And it's the comparison game. You never compare what you know about yourself to what you don't know about somebody else. You never compare your family to what, uh, what you know about your family and all the craziness in your family. And then you look at other people's family and go, man, I wish I had that family. No, you don't. Does it make sense? It, because you don't know. You have no idea. That's what social media does. It can, it can. And that's what I'm saying, You've got, we have got to be aware. And whether it's social media, whether it's ma magazines, whether it's commercials, whether it's stories or you know, whatever, movies, it, it, we, it's all the same, it can affect us. And so what I wanna remind you is that you and I have value. We sang this, this uh, song today, third song in the set, every campus sang it. And it says this, in my father's house. Now in your father's house, in your mom's house, maybe there wasn't a place for you. But in, 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 in our father's house, there is. Maybe in your house, you didn't, have, you didn't have the encouragement. You weren't as smart as your brother or sister. You weren't as talented. You weren't as athletic. You weren't as gifted. You were less than, and you knew it. In your father's house, in your mother's house. But in our father's house, there's a place for you. And, and, and it's hard to understand this. It's hard to receive this because it's so ingrained in us from early on. We know in school there were levels, classes, so to speak, of, of people that, that you knew, the cool kids, the athletic kids, the whatever, surfers, or cowboys or kickers or whatever you call them. 
There was all these levels of, of, of importance of friendships and, and money and cars and you know, all those things. This is just normal life. So you're not gonna get away from it. How do you do this? Well, you just gotta know that you are worth. God loves you. You are valued. You are worthy. You are loved, not in a humanistic way, in a God sort of way that you were created. He specifically created us in his image. He says, man, this is good. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. In your sin, in your inconsistency, in your lack of ability to do the right thing and make the right choices sometimes, in all of that as believers, child of God, yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who I am. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Guys, we have got to get this settled that we were all, no matter your color, no matter your religion, no matter your culture, no matter your country, we were all created in the image of God. All of us, there is no place to look at somebody else and their culture or their color or their religion or whatever and go, you are less than. That is crazy. That is not of God. Because we were created in the image of God. You were creating, we were all created in the image of God. So you don't look at somebody else and go, less than, less than. And we all do this, right? And social media just, just amplifies this a little bit. It just says, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, yeah. We were created in the image of God. There's a place for us. And I want you to get that, that you need to be reminded that no matter your color, no matter your culture, no matter where you come from, no matter your sin, no matter whatever it is, that God says there's a place for you. You are chosen. You are accepted. You're not forsaken. I know you. I know what you've done. I know your secrets. I know all of this and I still love you. There is no, listen, there is nothing my kids could do. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Nothing to stop me from loving them, nothing. I don't care what they do, and it could be, it could be awful. I'm still gonna love my kids. Does it make, do you understand what I'm saying? Because they, are, they, have, they have value to me. They are me, in a sense. Same with God. You and I were created in his image and you can look at social media and you can be jealous and you can be envious and you could you know, uh, play the comparison game and you can do all those things. But when God created you, here's what he said. Man, that is good. You get it? Man, that is good. I worked on that a lot. We were created... Put it on the screen. We were created in the image of God, not the image of others. Not the image of others. And if, and if, and if in your home, and if you're in your home you heard something else, if in school or some, for, from some other race you heard something else, that was a lie. You are not created in my image or anybody else's. You were created in God's. And he formed you and he created you and he loves you if you're overweight. He loves you if you are prone to craziness. He loves you whoever you are, whoever you are, wherever you're from. God created you in his image. And don't let anybody take that away from you. There is a place for you. There is a place for you. Imago Dei, let me put on the screen again, the image of God. I want, you, I want this to be the theme of your house this week with your kids. Let this be the theme you were created because teenagers, teenagers, this is real. You know this, bullying on social media. Kids have taken their lives because of somebody on social media. This is, cra it's, it's crazy and that's where it gets evil, right? Man, you gotta guard your kids. You gotta know what's going on. I'm gonna say guard. I don't mean control. I just mean guard them. Let them make sure, make, make a, ma, a, a mago dei. Make that something that you memorize. 
that we were created in the image of God. And somebody may be prettier, somebody may have more money, somebody may have more vacations, somebody may do this and may do that, but it's not real all the time. It is not reality all the time. So don't compare yourself, what you know about you, to what you don't know about them. Just know that you were created in the image of God with all your inconsistency, with all your freckles, with all your stuff. You were created in his image. Remember who you are. And the second, the second, equally as important, God specifically chose to create us in his image. Two, God specifically chose to create us in his image with a purpose. So he didn't just create us in his image to, so that we could just enjoy it, say, hey, look who I am. I'm a child of the king, playing video games all day, eating Doritos. No, 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 no. And I'm not saying you can't play video games. That's not what I'm saying. So please no emails about that. I know video games, you can make money and, and that's fine. I'm just saying in a lazy way that you just don't do anything and you have no purpose in life. In your, I didn't say, no, that's not what I meant to say to the, to the people who do that for a living. I'm saying that you, there's a purpose. There's a purpose for us. Let's just move on. God specifically chose to create us. What is, oh yeah, Ephesians 2. For listen to this, listen to this, because maybe you didn't hear this growing up. Maybe you didn't hear it at your table. Maybe you didn't hear it at your church, but you are a masterpiece. Now, listen, created anew because when we were created, he says, that is good. Sin comes in the picture. He says, mm, not so good. That's going to, that's going to cause, that's going to cause all kinds of stuff. So what God didn't do is just abandon us and say, okay, I'm going to go to Venus instead, or I'm going to go to a far, far galaxy away, far away. And, and I'm just going to start all over again and let them just do whatever they want. No, 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 no. He, 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 he said, no, I'm going to fix this. I'm gonna fix this. And what, did he, what does he do? He created us as a masterpiece. Created, kind of like redone. Like, I'm gonna do this again. Anew in Christ Jesus. And there's, here's the purpose part. So that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Because there is a, there's a reason for your image. There is a reason why we were created in his image. And that is for purpose the good things that he planned for us long ago. So in other words, it's not just about your image, it's just about who you are. And I, I wanna uh, submit again that you are important, you are valued, God loves you, you are worthy. But he created you in his image, specifically created, chose for a purpose. There's a reason why you and I were created and there's a reason why we were created the way that we were, are. There is a reason why you look like you look and act like you look. There's a reason that he wants to use that. He's gonna create a new, you a new in Christ Jesus so that you can do the things that he wants you to do, the good things that he wants you to do. So everything, listen, everything we say, and if you're not on social media, everything you say, everything you do, everything we post, everything we do, it is a reflection of the image of God. It's not just our reflection, does this make sense to you? It's not just our reflection. Well, this is just what I think. No, 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 no. You represent God. The Hebrew image, the best English translation would be a cutout. It would be a cutout of, of God, that we are cut out. So now we're not saying we're not, I'm not saying we're gods. I'm just saying we are cut out. We are reflecting his image everywhere we go. And everything we post is a reflection of his image. Everything you say is a reflection of his image. Everything you do is a reflection of his image. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, we are created in his image, but not just that, created in his image for a reason, for a purpose. And that is to do the good things that he's planned for us long ago. And so when you're on social media, remember that. Remember that somebody else looks at you and they compare themselves to you. What are they seeing? What are they hearing? Make sense? It's so important because, because we were, listen, we reflect his love. Who else is gonna do that? A kangaroo? Not even the angels. We, he chose us to, to reflect to this world, to reflect to this world, his love. We reflect his grace. You've received grace. 
How about we show it to others? We were created in his image for a reason. And so the reflection of our lives is everything we do, everything we say, everything we wear, everything we post. It's, it's a reflection of, of our creator. And, and we reflect his love and we reflect his grace and we reflect his peace and we reflect his mercy and we reflect his justice. We reflect his patience. We reflect his glory. We reflect the glory of God, his image. That's who we're created. So that's why, listen guys, I know I'm not trying to beat a dead horse and I'm not trying to offend you. I'm saying that when I talk about social media the way that I do, it is important to me, not because it's my opinion, but because here's what Jesus said about it. Here's what Jesus said about our lives. He says this, Matthew 5, you are the salt of the earth, but what good what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? What good, does it, what good is it if your opinion matters more than your reflection? What, what good is it if you are just more concerned about your political view than you are the reflection of God? Does it make sense? Can you make it salty again? Once you've thrown it out there, once you've just put it out there, it's like you can't get it back. It's thrown out and trampled underfoot. In other words, it, it, makes, it has no effect or has negative effect. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand. Social media, your neighborhood, your school, your ability to communicate. It's it's a light on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And listen to this last part. In the same way, let your good deeds, this is the purpose part, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will see your post and praise God. so that everyone will hear what you say and give praise. Everyone will hear what you do and give praise. This stuff matters to the Lord. I'm not saying you don't have an opinion. I don't say you don't have a right to your opinion, your opinion but you have sur- we have surrendered that to the image of God so that we reflect his love, we reflect his grace, we reflect his mercy, his peace, his glory, his patience, not ours. Next verse. It says, you have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, I want you to think about your enemy right now. I want you to think about who in your life right now, and I know the political arena is like on fire, and many of us are affected. I'm not saying you don't have an opinion, not saying you don't vote, whatever way, that's, that's, that's immaterial to me. What I'm saying is, we reflect the Lord's image with everything we post. And when Jesus says, hey, it's easy to love. It's easy to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Now think about your enemy right now. Think about who is your enemy. Who is your enemy right now? Think about it. And what Jesus says, not John. What Jesus says is love them. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true, true children of Father. Listen, what he's saying is the religious people are the guys who think they're going to take America back some form or fashion, but Jesus never said anything about Rome except pay your taxes. Thank you, right? <laughs> it's like, great. And I know you guys, somebody, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not purposely trying to offend what I'm trying to get us to, to, to understand is that this stuff does matter. And I'm not saying the political arena doesn't matter, that our country doesn't matter. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm, all I'm saying is that we are a reflection of God. We are a reflection to this world. We are salt, we are light. And what good is it if we lose our influence, if we lose it because of an opinion, because of some meanness, because of some judgment. But when, when Jesus says, hey, love your enemies, Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of the Father in heaven, for he gives sunlight. Listen, he gives sunlight to both the evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. In other words, I'm in control. I am in control. You're not in control. I am in control. So if you love only those who love you, What reward is there for that? If you just like people that think like you, if you just like and love people who act like you or look like you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that. 
If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect. Now, how many think that's a transliteration mistake? He certainly didn't want us to be perfect. Yes, he does. Yeah, he just wants you to know that you're reflecting God's image and you're salt and light and you're different. This is the same sermon, by the way. Chapters five, six, and seven of, of Matthew. Same Sermon on the Mount. And he says, this, this, is, this is chapter five. After he says salt and light, just read on down. And he says, hey, it's easy, it's easy to love the people you like, but I'm saying love your enemies. I'm saying pray for them. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those, oh, oh, listen, I'm not saying, again, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you don't have an, an opinion. I'm not saying you don't have a right to opinion, but do that in the context of relationship, not passive aggressively on Facebook. Where, where everybody around you has no context to what you're saying, especially if you do it in a, in, a, in, a, in a mean way. And I'm not just talking about politics. I'm even talking about sports. I'm a cowboy fan. I've been a cowboy fan all my life. And I understand that offends you, some of you, and that's okay. It's only a game. It is only a game. And I know that some of you are like, it is not. It is my life. But you need to go back to point number one. <laughs> Because it's not your life. And I don't like the Eagles. I don't like the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't like the Giants. I don't like the Redskins. They're under vision. I don't like them. Right? But it's a game. I don't really hate the Eagles. I don't really hate, I don't care. In the spectrum of life, does that make sense? Where was I at? What am I talking about? Oh, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about foolish things. I'm talking about things that matter, and, and you know who matters? Let me just, you, you know who matters, right? People matter to God, and if they matter to God, they, if they matter to God, because you matter, you matter, I matter, we all matter to God, don't you think somebody else matters? Donald Trump was created in the image of God. In that hair. <laughs> Joe Biden was created in the image of God without the hair. You want me to go down the list? You want me to make you more mad? Amen. Thank you. Guys, let's get some perspective here. It rains on the, on the unjust and the just, on the evil and the good. It rains on everybody. Look, God says, I'm in control of that. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about Rome. Don't you worry about the United States. Not saying we don't worry, not saying we don't pray. I'm just saying, this is scripture. Jesus said, hey, love your enemies. Whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever you post, there is a purpose behind it. And you are a reflection of me. I love you and you have value, but so does everybody else no matter the color of their skin, no matter the political badge that they may wear, it doesn't matter. God loves you and God loves them. And we reflect that love and that grace and that peace and that mercy and that justice. We reflect him. And again, I'm not trying to make you mad. I'm not trying to make you leave our church. You don't even know who I am. You don't know, who, you don't know if I'm a Republican or Democrat and it doesn't matter and you'll never know because that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to take America back. I am here. We are here to love as many people we can into the kingdom of God, to, to invite everyone we can to find Jesus, to follow Jesus, and then help them move to the center of his will for their lives. That, that my friends, is the bottom line. If that offends you, you come to me. I'm not in a, like a bad way. Don't come to me fighting you because you will be on the ground before you know it. Okay? Because I am so fast, it's not even funny. I'll break your nose in a, in a half a second. And you won't even be able to see me. And then I'll get my guards to... No, I'm kidding. I don't have guards. Please, please don't allow yourself to be offended by anything I've said today, even if it goes against what you believe or you think. Don't let the, my words be distracting. Last scripture, Matthew 7. Same sermon, 
do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. What's, what rule is this? It matters, guys. This is the essence. This is the completeness of everything taught in the law and the prophets. Insta family. We all have families, immediate families, church families, neighborhood families, school families, social media families. And don't let, don't let social media influence you in a way to think less of yourself. You are enough the way you are. You're enough. Because Jesus makes you enough. You created a new in Christ Jesus. to do the good works. So receive who you are and reflect who he is. Receive who you are and reflect who he is. Lord, I pray that my words would not be so distracting and so charged emotionally that we lose sight of what the important thing is. And that is what you've said to us about who we are and about how we're to, 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 to display your image. So every person in the room, every person at every campus who walks in, in a, an image of themselves that is less than, they've been told all their lives they aren't worthy. They've been told by moms or dads or coaches or teachers, they've been told by other races that is so sinful, so out of the character of you. Everyone, everyone matters. For God so loved the world. So let that penetrate our hearts. Let your word salt and light. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And treat others the way you wanna be treated. May we reflect your image in every word we say, in everything we do, in every post we make. In Jesus' name.